because Nomad has moved to a new house. This is it. I'm gonna be a boat caretaker for the next couple of weeks. My name is Suzanne and I've been traveling around the world for a while now, of which the last years, mostly on the sail as crew on other people's sailing boats. So with Ocean Nomad TV I like to connect you to the ocean, help you go on ocean adventures as well and uh, increase awareness for a healthy ocean. I'm on Pontoon S. This is the boat I'm taking care of. Here we are in the marina of Las Palmas in Gran Canaria, the Canary Islands. And I am boat sitting, literally. <laughs> I'm uh, taking care of someone else's boat. The owners are abroad and they um, they like to have someone looking after their boat uh, a little bit, so it's a, it's a win-win. I'm in the happy zone, and um, yeah, their boat is um, is being looked after. So this is the view of my uh, front yard. It's my first night on this catamaran. It's quite windy outside now, so um, gotta check if all the lines are okay, and I'm. Um, Try to identify all the weird sounds that I hear. You hear that? So this is the sound of a line that seems to have a lot of tension. I'm gonna check it out. There's a line ticking against the mast and it's waking up like the whole harbor. So, gotta fix it. How did I find out about this opportunity? This is the third time that I'm uh, boat sitting and uh, this particular boat I found basically through networking. I was chatting in the sailor's bar with a friend and uh, he was looking after this catamaran. He was going to set sail for the Atlantic and was looking for a new person to look after this boat. You hear that? So he put me in contact with the owner and um, it all sounded great on both sides, so, uh, so here I am. Hola, buenos dias! I'm cycling around Las Palmas a little bit to breathe some ocean air and to have a break from the computer which drives me nuts. How stunning is this view? That's where the key is now. I dropped the key of the boat in the water. <laughs> there she goes. How it is? Okay, this is a needle in the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna dive. Come on, you can do it. 
I'll come inside if you come up. So I. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> After a couple of very refreshing and dirty dives, I have not been able to find the key. So, gotta call the owner. Hey, uh, hey, this is uh, Suzanne. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, no, good. I'm calling. I'm calling for two things. Um, one, I dropped the key in the water. Um, of the boat. <laughs> I've been diving to it. <laughs> I've been diving to it to see if I could hopefully uh, find it. Because it's just... I don't find keys, but what do I find on the bottom of the sea these days? Let me take you for a free dive to the bottom of the sea and share with you what I see. Very rare are the dives that I don't find anything that does not belong to the sea. Bottles. Lots and lots of plastic bottles. Plastic bags. Fishing lines known as ghost fishing. Hundreds of kilometers of fish lines and nets made from plastic get lost at sea every year. This kind of trash doesn't only pollute, it's one of the biggest killers of wildlife living in or near the ocean. Fish get tangled or trapped. And these lines will never ever disappear unless we take them out. A TV. Lots of beauty too. And more bags. And this is what's floating around in the harbor. Bottles. Problem with plastic is that it never ever disappears anymore. All the plastic that has been produced is still out there somewhere. And a piece of plastic in the ocean is a million times more polluted than the water around it. Water repels chemicals and metals like mercury and arsenic. Plastic, on the other hand, attracts these toxins like a sponge. Fish and sea mammals mistake these plastic particles for food and ingest them, making them sick. The higher the plastic moves up in the food chain, the more toxins accumulate. Plastic isn't just around us, it's in us. Through the food we eat, the water we drink, the products we use, things we touch and even the air we breathe. Plastic is found in a third of the UK caught fish. Shellfish lovers could be eating up to 11,000 plastic pieces in their seafood each year. It's not a question anymore if we are eating plastic from seafood. The question is what it does to the health of the animals, the ocean and us. Suddenly there was a knock knock on the boat and there's a random guy showing up in a kayak offering his help to look for the key. How nice. He just heard about the uh, treasure hunt pontoon party and, uh, and he showed up. Miracles do happen. <laughs> I'm gonna call the owner and let them know. Hey, I just gave you a call with some good news. <laughs> I found the key. <laughs> just a random stranger showing up in his kayak with uh, diving equipment. Because he heard that, uh, that I lost the key from my friend who helped me this morning. And um, yeah, he, he found it. It took like 15 minutes. So we, we made a line with a little weight and we put it down. And then he, he couldn't see it, but he felt it with his hand. So, so it's all sorted. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know so you can have a bit more peace of mind. <laughs> Oh. 
boat. Boat sitting is not just literally sitting on a boat. I gotta take care of her. So I gotta make sure she stays clean. The water tanks are filled up. Everything is working fine. And that, um, that all the lines are, uh, are tied up well. If you like these videos and if you like to see more of it, subscribe. There's a button somewhere. And um, you will get a notification whenever I have the next video uploaded. Thank you for following me and supporting me. Thank you. The next video is going to be a little bit more exciting because we are going sailing. I'm going to take you across the Atlantic and show you what it's like to sail an ocean. <laughs>